Everyone here has been injured at some point, right? Everyone's got a scar or two, an abrasion or a cut, or just something that gets under your skin in a very literal sense. What's fascinating to me is that the body is able to handle these more minor injuries fairly on its own as long as it's given the right tools to do so. Yeah, they're gonna hurt for a little while, but a healthy body can get through a lot. Cause that's the thing, scars heal. Wait, no they don't, wounds heal. So what do scars do? They fade, I guess? The point is, wounds heal, and at this point I don't think I need to tell you that it's thanks to nutrition. There's one nutrient in particular whose functions all line up in a way that is involved in pretty much every part of the healing process, and it may be the single most well-known nutrient that people don't know the purpose of. But I say that changes today, so without further ado, let's get back into the true nutrients. Zinc. Unlike many other minerals, I would be willing to bet that most people's minds, when they hear that word, go straight to nutrition. Zinc is an essential nutrient. It is necessary for optimal health, but the body cannot produce it on its own, thus it must be consumed. Zinc the element was originally discovered in 1746 by German chemist Andreas Margraff, but it wasn't until 1869 that zinc was reported to be essential for organism growth. And that was just microorganisms, as it wasn't until 1934 when zinc was proven to be necessary for development of animals. Now, zinc is what's called a trace mineral, meaning that there's a lot less of it in the body when compared to other minerals like sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium, but it is the second most abundant trace mineral right behind iron. There's an estimated 1.5 to 2.5 grams of total zinc in the body. Zinc is present in every cell, but most of it is in the bones and skeletal muscle, with a good amount of it also found in the skin. That being said, zinc does not have a dedicated method of storage like some other minerals do. It is regularly being excreted, usually in feces, and thus its daily consumption is important. Fortunately, zinc is found in a lot of common foods that we'll discuss later, and it's absorbed at a 20 to 40 percent rate, with animal sources being generally more bioavailable. Due to this, zinc is far from being the most commonly deficient micronutrient out there, especially in more developed countries where zinc rich foods are accessible. Thus, it is not required to be on a standard FDA food label unless zinc has been added to the product. That being said, I think it's still good to have some awareness of what this nutrient does, as not having proper levels of zinc in the body consistently can cause a ripple effect, detrimenting many of the bodily functions we often take for granted. Similar to another mineral we covered recently, magnesium, zinc functions largely as a cofactor, initiating and regulating over 300 enzymes in the body. Its presence is necessary for many functions in the body, but I want to go a bit more in depth with some of the bigger roles. As I talked about earlier, a lot of its uses can be tied to wound healing, which is the function that is most commonly brought up. Zinc is critical for the synthesis of collagen and elastin, structural proteins that are needed for the strength and elasticity of connective tissue and your skin, helping to keep it firm and hydrated while also preventing signs of visible aging. Zinc is also essential for the process of cell proliferation itself. It stabilizes the structure of DNA and RNA, promoting proper replication and transcription, so that when cells divide, they are as blemish-free as possible. And zinc also catalyzes cell division, which is how growth and healing works in the first place. Zinc also plays a few roles in immune health. It regulates lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell that is responsible for killing infected cells and tumor cells. Also, zinc's promotion of skin health is immune related due to your skin being the first line of defense from pathogens. And zinc is also needed for the production of certain antibodies. And the last major role worth mentioning is zinc's impact related to digestive health. Zinc is used for proper carbohydrate and fat metabolism, the synthesis, storage, and secretion of insulin, the upkeep of intestinal performance by reducing damage, and just moderation of gut biome health. But like I said earlier, zinc is found in every cell in the body, and it's a cofactor for so many other functions as well, leading to countless other benefits. But some of the ones that may catch your eye include prevention of age-related diseases, improvement of mental and cognitive performance, reduction of LDL cholesterol and blood pressure levels, management of blood sugar levels, and prevention of macular degeneration. Being primarily a cofactor and catalyst nutrient, it would take a long time to name and appreciate all the benefits zinc has a hand in. It's much like magnesium in that regard. But unlike magnesium, zinc has a much more achievable consumption recommendation, one that many people reach without even really trying.
The recommended daily intake of zinc is 11 milligrams for men and 8 milligrams for women, the exception being pregnant and breastfeeding women in which it jumps up to 11 milligrams and 12 milligrams respectively to account for the baby. That being said, the average daily zinc consumption, at least here in the States, hovers at around 13 milligrams for men and 9 milligrams a day for women, which are safely above the average RDAs. Keep in mind this is very generalized and the mineral needs to vary from person to person, but this does make zinc the first nutrient I've covered where the general population is actually consuming about the right amounts of it. Again, as we'll get to more specifically in a minute, zinc is fairly dense in a lot of commonly eaten foods, and it has an absorption rate that just works with many people's diets. Despite the fact that zinc is not really stored for emergency use and is excreted every day, it would take a lot less effort to make up for a deficit when compared to other minerals like calcium, magnesium, and iron. That being said, while rare in the states, zinc deficiency actually affects an estimated 25% of the world's population. Usually, zinc deficiency is caused by a lack of it in the diet, but some groups are at a higher risk of it, including vegans, older individuals, pregnant and breastfeeding women, and those with gastrointestinal issues and certain rare diseases like sickle cell disease. Symptoms of zinc deficiency include chronic inflammation, impaired growth and development, delayed sexual maturity, impaired or slowed wound healing, cognitive decline, digestive issues, hair loss, poor skin health, and a decrease in sex hormone levels, and many more. Zinc affects a lot. Now, looking at the flip side, the general population is also doing a pretty good job of avoiding consuming too much zinc. The upper intake level that you're not recommended to exceed is 40 milligrams a day. Zinc overconsumption and toxicity is rare, but not unheard of, though it does often occur because of supplement abuse. Symptoms include nausea, stomach pain, vomiting, diarrhea, and possible interference with copper absorption. If you have any concerns regarding any of this, zinc levels can be most easily diagnosed by a a blood test or a urine test and then you can make adjustments from there. And as usual, let's finish with good sources of zinc. As I've said, plenty of common foods contain zinc in varying amounts, so what I'm about to show you is not all the good sources, they're just the best sources. When it comes to animal sources, most meats will provide substantial amounts of zinc. As a whole, mammalian meats contain more than seafood and poultry meats, with the major exception of oysters. Oysters are so comically rich in zinc, and I actually don't know why, but for everyone else like me who finds them disgusting, rest assured that if you eat meat and or dairy regularly, zinc will likely not be a nutrient you have to worry about. Zinc is a bit less accessible in plant foods, partially due to them being only about half as bioavailable as their animal counterparts. Though the majority of legume-like foods, including seeds, nuts, beans, and soy, will be the bulk of these substantial sources. The majority of grains and vegetables also consistently contain some zinc. Chances are, if you naturally include nutrient-dense foods in your diet, zinc will not be a concern for you. Zinc supplements are available, but are usually only needed by those whose body doesn't handle the nutrient like it's supposed to. All right, one more nutrient in the books. One thing I've actually had to relearn recently is that your body's not going to feel great all the time. Sometimes it's going to hurt. Sometimes it's going to get sore and it's going to get wounded when you decide to start using it to its fullest potential. After all, accidents do happen. But to rather lazily use another awesome movie quote, it's not about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving. When the body is given what it needs, it will keep moving, so you better hold up your end of the bargain too. Now if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe as I've got plenty more of these on the way. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments what other nutrients you think deserve an entire in depth breakdown video like this. And remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your body. You only get the one.